write a program to generate 10 random numbers. That we have the word permutation it just means that numbers are arranged in a random order. Okay. So every time when you run the program, it's going to generate a list of 10 numbers from one to 10 and arrange a different orders randomly. And you should not have duplicates as be unique numbers between one and 10. So how would how will we do this? And what is the best approach to do it? Okay, so the idea is that you're going to have a list of 10 slots, and then you're gonna to go to the first slot and add a number there, right? The brute force approach will be, you go to the first slot, right? Go to the first one. So you check here, you check. Check if list is empty, right? If it's empty, then there's no data in there yet. That's like, that's like the case number one. It's like case, uh, uh, I guess case number one. If it's empty, they, of course, the first number could be any number between one and 10, right? It doesn't really matter. So then you, if it's, that's the case, then you add one to the first, right? So here you would, before we do that, let's create a list first. So we put it um, num a list is equal to empty, okay? If it's blank, there's no data in there yet. And so we check the list. So we say, if the num list, num list is actually the len, right? So len of the num list is equal to zero. That means that there's no data there yet. So it's gonna be the first number you're going to generate. Now I do want to uh, um, mention one thing here. We didn't cover this yet, but there is a, uh, a library that you need to import into Python to use it and that's called random. So up here in the very top of your code, you wanna import a library called random. Okay. And we'll do this uh, next time, how you can use that, your own uh, module, hey, import into your program and use it. So this random here has a, another function called random.randint. For example, I, I'll, I'll do it here to show you, um, so you can see it. Now this is a really good way to use it. So I'm gonna import random first, okay. And there's a function called random, that ran int, you pass a number, you can see that there are two parameters, the A and B, it just mean the minimum and the maximum. So it's a range between, let's say one and five. Okay, if you wanna generate random between one and five, that is gonna give it to you, okay? So if I go up there, okay, and around again, you see that every time I, I hit that, it's gonna randomly generate a number for me between one and five. Okay, so that's how you use it to generate a random number uh, it's gonna, we're gonna fill this list from one to 10, all right? So uh, I'm gonna put here a R for the number, for the random number is gonna be I mean, random dot rand int, we want the integer between one and 10, right? That's, this is between one and 10, okay? So initially you will run it, you might get a one, you might get a 10, I don't know. But if the list is empty, I know that I can go ahead and add that to the num list. We use the append function, okay? That always add to the end of the list. So I'm gonna add the R to that list. So now I got my first number, okay? That only works for the first case when the list, the list is empty. After that, we don't know anymore, right? It's gonna be, have one number, it might have all 10, we don't know. Um, so, so from here on, then we're going to um, maybe use a loop, right? Use a loop and the loop can uh, generate a, 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 a um, so from one to 10 or from, I guess, one to nine, doesn't matter how you do it, okay? And <clears throat> so if it's not, so if, you, if it's not zero, then we need to generate those numbers, okay? So that means we're gonna start a, a loop for every number of, uh, from, let's say, um, what should we call it? From I up to, and the range of one up to uh, 10, right? because we already have the first one. 
So we're just in the one, two, ten, which is nine, nine numbers left. <clears throat> so that means like the second slot, right? So, so in this case, after we did that one, so our num will look like, for example, if the random is two, then it looks like that, okay? Then the next time we check is no longer a two. So what do we do, okay? We, 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 will, we will then check to see if it's a, um, if it's a, if it's the number is in the list or not, right? <clears throat> if it's in there, then we want to uh, um, generate a random number again until we get a random number. So before I do this though, I wanna put this into a loop because we're gonna loop this to uh, the whole thing uh, 10 times. So actually I should, up here, I wanna do is um, put a loop up here. Uh, let's do a, uh, here, let's do a range. Actually, this should be up here. It should be up here. I, I probably should be up here. If I, for range between one, actually, all the way one to 10, which is 10, right, including zero, which is the index for now. And I don't, I don't like 10 here, right? It's a magic number. So we don't like it. So usually you put here max. Max is 10. Okay, you put max here and then here from zero to max. So don't use the match, match number in your in your code. And then we're gonna indent this over like this, <clears throat> right? So before we do that though, I want just to randomly generate the number first. Maybe I should move that up here like this. I generate a random number first. I check to see if the list is empty. And if it is empty, then Go ahead and add that to the list. Okay. Uh oh, forgot my colon here. If it's not empty, that means the list has some data already. Then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do the following. <clears throat> so you have what do you have to do? Actually, I'm not gonna do uh, that one here yet. I already did up here, so I'm not gonna do a loop again. So that means that it's possible that. The number could have like two, five, eight, and already, but I don't know in there. So what I do is you can check to see if this random number is in the list, right? So you say, if the R is in the list of num lists, okay? Remember that one, the function? So for example, if it's uh, if the list is one, two, three, right? If it say is two and if three and L, it'll return true, right? If it's not in the L, if I put 12 and you return false, okay? So if it's already in there, that means that I, I don't want to add the random number again. I have to generate a different random number again, right? It has to be different. So that means if it's in the list, then you basically continue. You can do this, continue, do nothing, right? Skip it and go back to the loop again. But if you do that, uh, this loop is going to go to the next one. And so you might skip the next lot. You might skip it. So you don't want to skip it. I'm stuck. So right now I'm stuck at the uh, first number. I'm looking at the second position. And the second position, I check it. I say, do I have a number already? If I randomly generate two again, it's, oh, two is already in there. Okay. So I have to go and back and get a regenerate another number. But I don't want to keep looping this all the way to 10 yet. So that means that I have to loop this whole thing inside another loop, right? So I'm doing a brute force here. So that means that I would have to do something like um, while something is true, I can force it to be true and then move that over, okay? So at the first index, I'm looking at the first lot. And if it's true, yes, yeah, continue the loop here. I generate a random number, let's say I got a two. Okay, so you got a two. I check my list for the very first time. It's empty, so it is zero. Okay, that's good. Then add two or push two to the list of num two, num list. Now it has two. So this else clause is completely skipped, goes back to the L, goes back to the well, and then this whole thing repeats again. So I don't want that either, right? I want to be able to jump out of the while loop and go back to the next index. So it goes to the next position. Okay, so that means once I append it here, then I have to break out of that loop, okay? Uh, this means exit the while loop. So exit the while loop, you completely get out of that, 
And then there's nothing out here. So we're gonna go to the next index. Now I'm looking at uh, number. So initially zero, now I'm looking at position at one. Okay, so the index one comes in, the whole thing repeats again, I generate another number. Let's say this time I got a three. Okay, the three goes in here. I check this part. No, this is no longer true. So this whole thing will be skipped. This only runs at the very first time. But I need to check that anyway. And then it goes down here. So I check this R. Is this R, which is three, is three in that list? My list was only two. So no, it's not. It's not true, right? So therefore, this is not true. So I don't continue. I will go to the else clause. Because it's not in the list, that means that I'm going to go ahead and add this to my list. So I go to num list that append the R. Okay. And then once I do that, again, I have to break out of that, right? Because once I found it, then I have to break out of that. Okay. And then now we go in an index. I'm just doing here. I'll stop here. Index number two. So now I go here and I randomly generate a number. Let's say this time I got a two again. Okay, it's a random number, right? Between one and 10. So down here, this is false. We skip this. We go to the else clause. It's two in the list. And we already had two and three now. By now we had two and three, right? So um, yes, two is in the list. Okay, so two is in the list. So therefore, this is true. You're going to continue. Continue means skip everything else and go back to the while loop. Okay, we go back here again. And then we generate, render another number again. What if I get a two again? It's possible, right? So you see this cycle through until I get a number that's no longer two. And I get a, let's say I get a seven. And then now seven comes in here. This is false. Yeah, it's not in there. It's a new number. I add that to this list of my Number now has three, seven. I break out the while loop, okay? And then now you go to index number three, right? So you see how this is done. This is a, a really um, tedious process. Uh, it's called a brute force approach uh, because you go through every iteration, uh, the entire list of 10 numbers and you randomly generate a number from one to 10. It's unique, you place it in there. So we'll see if this works, okay? I'm gonna go down here and save it. And let's run and let's see if, uh, and at the very end over here, I'm gonna print out, print out my uh, num list and see what that looks like, okay? So you can run this and here's my num list. As you can see, it's unique from one to 10. There's no duplicates in there. So run it again, I should get a different permutation, right? It's randomly a different. Okay, so here I put one up to 10. I should have put here up to max, right? Max is 10. So now I can do more. I can add like, what if I go up to 50, right? So you can see that by changing, using this kind of variable, it's very easy to change one place and your program works just like that. So if I go and run it now, I'm gonna get 50 numbers and they should all be unique, okay? So this is the, what's called the brute force approach because I'm going through my list, I'm adding one at a time, but every time before I add a number, I have to randomly generate a number between one and max. And if it's already in the list, I have to keep you know, cycling this every time until I get a different number, I can add it to the list. So it's possible that I keep getting a two <clears throat> you know, many times. So wasting a lot of CPU time, right? We don't know because that's really fast. <clears throat> you can't tell. So I want to show you an approach that is um, <clears throat> asked by the, uh, the author. So what I'm going to do is going to put this into a, um, uh, put it to a function. We'll call it um, def, uh, let's call it F1 for now. So I move everything over. Okay, and uh, if you want to use it, you can call it down here, right? You can call, um, so to use it, you have to call F1 and then you invoke that function, right? So you can get the result out here, okay? 
So now I'm going to do another one. This time we'll do the F2 using the one that is uh, given by the book and, or something similar. So the author says, let's go back over here, use this approach, okay? This one here that does something like this. Now, why is this important, uh, efficient? Well, we'll just check it out. So it says make a second list and fill the list with numbers from one to 10, right? So we keep this num list as, as, as it is, but we're gonna fill another list. So it says, I'm gonna go here, create a list, we call it, um, uh, what should we call it? Numbers, I guess. And this number is gonna be filled with a number from <clears throat> one to 10, right? So one, if it's just gonna be one to 10, instead of doing it that way, I'm gonna do a, a for loop very quick, for i and range from uh, one up to uh, max, right? Actually, yeah, zero up to max, max is, as, as you can see, it's, it's orange. So my variable is kind of bad, right? It's a keyword, but that's fine for, for now. And I'm gonna generate a number from nums, <clears throat> append the i plus one, okay? So I'm basically generate another one, one, two, and then up to max, okay? That is the number. So one to 10, one to 100 and so forth. So that is my second list. This is the thing here. Now repeat 10 times, as you can see here. So we do a range for i, i and range up to 10. We're gonna call it 10, we'll call it uh, uh, max, right? Whatever that is. <clears throat> so it says remove the element at the position of the second list. And remove means you can use a remove function. You can use the pop function. A lot of the functions that we talked about last time so for example, if my list is go to one, three, five, like this, right? To remove like the first position, you could do a L dot remove and then remove a value, a value of one, right? Remove that one. And now my list has only three and five left. So every time I take out a number, I reduce the size by one. Okay. So once I reduce it, the number is gone from the list. So I don't have to worry about random numbers. It's already, it's already, uh, um, it's already there. So my my other list will always be unique. All right, that's one option. Another option you can do is uh, you can do a l dot pop. If you just do pop here, it will always pop the last one on the list. I don't want that. I want to pop a number that is in there. So and uh, the number of uh, uh, the index position of uh, the number. So let's say three. It's not possible because three is not an index. My L has only two, so zero and one only. So the pop function would do L dot pop, a position of one will give you five. If it turns the number, also it removes from the list. Okay, so my it pops up five, it turns that number, and then it drops that from the list, and then my list is down to one. Okay, so I will use the function, and I'll add this number that is pop from the list, I append that to my num list. Okay, so here I'm going to randomly generate a number. The number will be the index of this num list from one to whatever it is, right? So here you would randomly generate a number like um, like like we did before. And so I would do here r again, random dot rand int between zero, okay, up to not max, okay, if you do that, it will always generate a number between, you know, up to max, we don't want that. The size, remember that when we when we remove something, this size shrinks by one, shrink by one every time. So we wanna do is the length of the nums, right? This num number now it has whatever that many x, if it's 10, it has size of 10. I remove one, it's gonna be size of nine, size of eight, seven, six, and so forth. So my random number is gonna be from one, actually, uh, yeah, from zero up to that number minus one because it's the index position, right? The index is always one less than the length. So this is, this is the index yeah, between zero and n minus one, right? So I get a random position. 
this is the render position of R. And then what I do is I'm going to just basically, it says remove that element from that list. So if you do something like this, if put N is equal to uh, nums dot remove. If I remove, but again, I have to randomly get a number, I, but I don't want that number. I want to get the position of that. So again, that's why I say I'll use the pop at the R position, okay? If the R is the index position of these numbers. So if this is like, you know, uh, it's gonna be like one, one, two, three, four, five, and then all the way to uh, N, right? 100, it doesn't matter, okay? So it says the index of whatever this random is, let's say it's random of three. So here goes zero, one, two. This is the position of the three third index, right? So I'm gonna pop this number four out, assign the number two to N. At the same time, pop will remove this from the list. Okay, so I, I take that out and then I append that to the num list, the N to the list and it's pop so that at this point, this has been reduced by one, okay? So the number is now gone from the list because four is out. It's gonna be one, two, three, and then five to the rest of those numbers, All right? And then it would do it again. So you go back and you go to the next index position, the next one, right, of the range, or whatever that is. You do it again, get an, a random position, if I get a three again, this is a one, zero, one, two, three. So I pop that number out, it's five, save that to N. So five is removed from that list. And then now I add it to the list and so forth. So now I'm dealing with the position only um, and I will always get a unique index because my index is always shrunk by one, right? So eventually it's gonna get to zero. Okay, and that's when we stop. So this is the approach that is given here. And so if I go back down here and run the F2 function, and if it's correct, I should get the same result as before. Save it and run it, oops. <clears throat> okay, so I get a random number, again, just like before from one to 50. I can make it smaller so we can see um, those 10 digits. Okay, so here you go, it's unique, just like the other one. Okay, so as you can see, both works, which is fine. But now it's like, which one is more efficient, right? And that is why uh, programming is, is so uh, intriguing, it's so fun because you can have this, you know, code can be done in many diff different ways. And what is the best way? How do you measure that? Okay, I'll just show you one example to do that. So you can you can see why sometimes uh, one is better than the other, okay? So to measure it, I'm gonna go up here and, in, and random uh, get another um, library called time. So I will measure the time before I call the function. So right here, I'm gonna start here, okay? The function up here is not really important. It, it only uh, affects when I call this function or this function here, okay? So it will go in here, do its own thing, and then it will exit out, right? Okay, so so before I, let, let's try F1 first, okay? Before I run it, I'm gonna set called T1, is equal to time that I'm, I'll start here. It will set a, the clock, and then it will go and run the F1 process. And then when it gets out, I get different times, so we'll call it T2, okay? And then I get my list. And then I'm gonna go also here, print the, uh, call it um, F1. And we'll get the difference between the two, right? It's, it's basically um, T2 minus T1, right? We'll give you the difference in time, okay? So, so for example, let's just see what happens, right? Here, hit run. Okay, so the time is like zero, zero. It's really, really fast, right? You can't really tell because it, it's way too fast. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm also change this to um, a format. Let's put a percent here. Uh, we'll go to maybe like 15 decimal places. Okay, and we'll do, just make sure it's subtraction first. 
uh, up to 15 decimal places. So you can see the number is it's still zero, 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 not too bad, right? It's because number is too small. What happens when I reduce or change this to, let's say, 100? Okay, the size of 100 numbers. Now let's see what it looks like. Okay, you can see that the time is consuming now. Instead of 0000, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, Okay, what if I ever change it to, let's say, 500? Okay, 008, not bad. What if I change it to 1,000? Okay, so 0 0.04, right? So you can see it's, it's not that bad, right? It still goes and still does it uh, quite fast. Now it's lagging, okay? 10,000, it's still a long take. So it took me four seconds, okay? So four seconds for a 10,000 number. Now let's try the second one. By the F2, okay, the same number of, of numbers, and I run this, so boom, right? 0 0.009 seconds at 10,000 numbers. So you can see this is way more efficient than the F1, okay? So you can see both F1, and I run F2 here, and then I'll have a time three is equal to time dot time, and then we'll duplicate this. Um, this is the F2 times would be T3 minus T2. Okay, so we save compare the two and you will see that it's cat is running right now. So we go, the F1 takes about 4.8 seconds. The F2 is only 0 0.01 seconds. Okay, so you can see the result is the same, but the code is makes it so more efficient using the second approach, right? So uh, sometimes when you, when you program, yeah, do the brute force first, make sure it works. Once it's working, then you can go back and revise it to make it more efficient.